Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And I'm Patrick from Tested and Tech Thing. And Patrick, you're back with another tiny computer. It, yes. The tiny computers are completely out of control. <laughs> There's the Raspberry Pi, of course, the latest right. generation. Well, the Raspberry Pi Zero, the Raspberry Pi 3, mm -hmm. the original Raspberry Pis, the, uh, oh goodness, the $9 PC, the chip PC. Yes, that's right. Uh, and, you know, and like a half dozen others, the one that's kind of caught everybody's imaginations recently, this is the Odroid C2, uh, designed by Hard Kernel, and it is a really interesting board for a lot of people, especially, uh, and it's funny, because I was I was a little dismissive of this when I first reviewed it, and, and, and one of the viewers on Tech Thing was like, we use Odroid stuff all the time in deployments, in the field, it's awesome. And here's kind of what's going on with the Odroid CD. I'm going to mostly compare it to the Raspberry Pi 3. So it looks very, very similar, right? It's yeah. a small single board computer inside of here. We've got four Ethernet, or right. excuse me, we've got Ethernet, four USB ports, uh, a micro SD card. What's that? It has the ability to do eMMC, which means uh, bigger storage and considerably faster storage. Uh, it's got a relatively Pi Hat compatible hat. There's no Wi Fi, there's no Bluetooth, but it does have an IR. Uh, receiver on it. I suggest you power it with an external power supply or a dedicated power supply, although you can run power to it over the micro SD. The big thing for a lot of people that are frustrated with the performance of the Raspberry Pi boards is the Ethernet and the USB do not share a USB channel to the processor. Mm. And the processor is pretty awesome. It's like a two gigahertz. I'm, I'm going to use the cheat sheet here. Totally. Um, a two gigahertz quad core ARM Cortex A53, which is way faster than 1.2 gigahertz part of the Raspberry Pi 3. Two gigabytes of RAM. The Pi 3 has one gigabyte of RAM. A uh, Mali 450 GPU, so I can do H.265 and run 4K video. Um, gigabit Ethernet on board, like I mentioned, that isn't shared with the USB bus. Uh, micro SD or EMMC for cord storage. Uh, and it's got Ubuntu and Android Lollipop OS options. Ooh. Can you dual boot or you can run one or the other? I haven't tried dual booting. As far as I know, you're going to do one or the other. Got I haven't it. seen a dual boot option. Um, I may not have dug enough deep enough on, on the Android's wiki, but as near as I can tell, you either boot Android or you boot uh, Ubuntu. And I've mostly booted with the Linux on it. Also, a big heatsink. A big heatsink. One of the things we're seeing with a lot of the single board computers, or I should say the case suppliers for single board computers, is they're starting to either to ship their cases with heat sinks or with the options to mount fans, mm. especially for people like if you're building a set top box and you have, or you're, you know, you're building something where it's doing a lot of video and a lot of computing, for example, like a main box, um, but especially for the newer boards with the faster chips, they want to run more air on over them. In this case, it's, it's compared to anything I've seen on a Raspberry Pi that is a pretty massive heat sink. Uh, I didn't notice any particular heat issues when I was using it. Um, maybe I was doing it wrong, but the performance uh, seemed to be okay. And I wasn't like touching this and thinking, I can use it to keep my coffee warm. Yeah. Is that the case standard to come with it? This, I bought the case and the power supply separately. The board sells for $42. If you buy it, and the trick is to buy it from Ameridroid. Uh, you can get it from Hard Kernel directly in Korea, but then it's going to be like a $16 shipping fee. And you're going to find out whether or not it gets held up in customs. But it's $42 from Ameridroid here in the United States. It's their U.S. distributor. Um, I think I want to pay, I paid $7 for the case and another seven or eight bucks for the power supply, mostly because I didn't want to go digging through the giant rat's nest of power supplies to see if I had the one connector that would work with the board. Um, but I also have gotten to the point where I want to have the best power I can get for any single board computer so I don't have any issues when I start connecting things to it. Um, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. So if you were building a tiny PC mm -hmm. for purposes of media serving, right. or even for MAME, uh, would you choose this or a Raspberry Pi? This is really tempting for anything where you're moving data on and off of it. It's really tempting. Um, Jeff Geerling, uh, you guys quoted one of his articles looking at micro SD mm -hmm. performance yep. on Tested.com. Um, you know, he's he's been doing the Pi Dramble, which if you haven't seen it, is really really cool. Uh, his benchmarking for the Odroids uh, Gigabit Ethernet in terms of like I/O was like three times the best case scenario. It was three times the throughput, like 938, um, or say 938 megabits per second. Wow. Now, if you're talking about like copying to a micro SD card, it seems like the micro SD performance yeah. is, the, is the limiting, and he wants to do some EMMC performance in terms of file transfers to see if he can up that. But in terms of pure like slugging stuff over gigabit, like I wanted to use this as a as a small server. This has a huge advantage over the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, because the gigabit Ethernet is unfettered. It's not. It's just not chained right. down by being stuffed over a USB port. Right. And, and there's still USB 2.0 controllers on here. Yeah. At which you know, at this point, there's only so much you're going to get out of it. Um, 
you know, but in terms of, of raw performance on his Drupal tests, it was like 36% faster than the Raspberry Pi 3. Wow. Again, double the memory, you know, a higher clock speed, a more advanced GPU, the ability to, to render H.265. Um, it's an interesting board. It does not have one advantage that the Raspberry Pi does, which is that huge community, right? Mm -hmm. There isn't, you know, there's like, you know, Odroid makes a case for the Odroid, right? There's a billion people making cases for Raspberry Pis. Um, there are a billion distributions that are customized and tuned for the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi operating system has all of the support from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, so it is very, very smooth. There are lots of options. Raspberry Pi is incredibly noob friendly. This is going to help you become a better Linux user, um, you know, and it's being developed by a smaller organization. So, you know, in the early days, it it just doesn't feel as stable. Mm. Um, you know, for a headless operation where you're not using the GUI, I think it's probably super stable right now because Linux without a GUI. How do you hurt that? Um, you if know, you're going to plug in HDMI and then use it as a <laughs> tiny computer you can put in your pocket and plug into a monitor. Maybe not so much. Yeah, and it was I. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if in in three months, you know, ninety percent of it's sorted out. I haven't spent much time playing with it on Android. Um, I'm really kind of curious to do that. But at this point, I'm I'm so used to Linux, I was more comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, you know, but we, you know, we were we were using it in terms of like, you know, we had multiple windows open, we were browsing, we were playing with Minecraft. It, you know, and it was still usable. It wasn't, it, you know, it, it's still though like the Raspberry Pi. You've got like the creme de la creme of performance of desktops from like sixteen. Years years ago. Yeah. I mean, what, what strikes me is how fast these tiny computers technology is improving, mm -hmm. how fast they're iterating, putting more memory, putting faster yeah. processor, and better video decoding on these things. So un unless you have a specific project you're going to use it for, right. you know, you can afford to wait. If you're going to try to learn, <laughs> then the Raspberry Pi may be the best one for you. Yeah. I mean, if, if you need a cheap uh, device to do your homework on, I would probably say save your pennies and buy a $200 laptop or a Chromebook, right? right. You know, th those are perfect for that. Um, if you want to experiment and get better at Linux or you want to have a really you know high powered platform that's relatively inexpensive you don't want to spend a thousand dollars for a new phone to play around with with uh, uh, with uh, Android then this is a really really interesting part if you found yourself you're comfortable with Linux you're comfortable with playing around with the distros yourself you know you get your github on and, and, and screwing stuff around then this is going to give you considerably increased uh, network bandwidth and some really really fast storage options compared to the Raspberry Pi Awesome. So if well, you are a super new, I'd probably say this is going to be a test to your patience. I don't know how <laughs> much I want to get better at Linux through necessity. Yeah. It's the best way to learn, Norm. <laughs> through necessity. I guess you need to. That's the Odroid C2. Odroid Thanks C2. Thanks for bringing in, Patrick. And we can find more of your product reviews uh, on techthing.com. That's where yes, all, you also have your weekly show. You can find more of our reviews also on tested.com. But until next time, we'll see you guys.